Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is uh, Talha Ayub. I'm from Stroger Hospital, one of the third year medical residents over there, uh, one of the cardiology fellowship aspirants also. So uh, we'll start. Uh, I'm presenting today a curious case of refractory recurrent coronary vasospasm. The objectives of this presentation is today to recognize uh, early recognition of non-plaque rupture causes of acute coronary syndrome and highlighting the role of hypersensitivity in such types, subtypes of ACS, and also describing the role of pharmacotherapy in certain rare cases of ACS. So we'll start with my case summary. I'm presenting a 29-year-old Hispanic female who has this past medical history and who's basically presented with three serial hospitalization. We'll go through them briefly. The first presentation was in March 2017, where she presents with five days of recurrent anginal chest pain. Vitals were stable. She had elevated troponins when she presented to the ED. And she had a leukocytosis with eosinophilia with absolute eosinophilic count of 0 0.7. So this is the presenting EKG. As you can see, ST segment depressions and ST elevations in AVR. This is a coronary angiogram uh, on presentation concerning that she had an NSTEMI. And as you can see in the aria cranial view, there's sphere spasm of, um, let me play it, sorry. So sphere spasm of LAD, which resolved after intracoronary vasodilator therapy. Then this is, the, this is also the same angiogram showing uh, LAO view with no evidence of spasm in the uh, RCA. So RC has no spasm, as you can, guys can see here. So, so after two days, while the same hospitalization, patient developed uh, recurrent chest pain, had hypotension and sinus bradycardia, and also had ST elevations in the inferior, inferior, um, <coughs> inferior leads. So it was presumed to be a spasm of RCA, and, it, and that was the etiology that we thought of as, as the decompensation of her um, um, stable state. And she was managed conservatively and discharged on day five with um, isosorbide mononitrate 30 and amlodipine 2.5 milligrams. Uh, this is the EKG on the second day when she became hypertensive and bradycardic. Now she comes back again two months later in May 2017 with the recurrent same complaints with vitals that were stable and we managed the patient uh, supportive management without any angiogram, diagnostic, or therapeutic, and optimized the medical therapy, went up from 30 to 60, and also uh, added deltiazem for vasospastic angina. Now, she comes back again in November 2017 with recurrent episodes of chest pain at RAS for four days. In the ED, she was, uh, her vitals, her heart rate was 104, uh, blood pressure was uh, 98 over 67, and she had elevated tropes, again, with leukocytosis showing eosinophilia, absolute eosinophilic count of 1.5. This is the EKG from presentation without any non that with no specific symptoms when she presented. And this is after a certain time, while she was in the ED, when she started developing recurrent chest pain, that you can see the, <clears throat> while she was in the ED, she became bradycardic, hypotensive, and had a PEARS, needed a CPR, uh, uh, with the return of uh, spontaneous circulation. She was intubated and initiated on mechanical ventilation. Initially, was managed conservatively with IV midazolam and nitroglycerin, but six hours later, she developed worsening bradycardia and hypotension and was taken for coronary angiogram. So these are the... Sorry about that. Trying to show you. First, here. So this shows sphere spasm of RCA, as you guys can see. And then this is after initial intracoronary vasodilator therapy, not completely resolved. And this is after intracoronary 1500 micrograms of nitro, verapamil, apsiximab, and hydrocortisone that the patient had so some improvement in her RCA spasm. That's the peripheral angiogram, and we wanted to put in the intraortic balloon pump, the catheter pullback demonstrating CFS spasm, as you guys can see on this um, video. 
I will play it again. Okay, so angiogram findings, multifocal vasospasm of RCA, circumflex, and right common femoral arteries, and that was relieved with high doses of intracoronary rapamil, nitroglycerine, afliximab, and intravenous hydrocortisone. Left femoral interiotic balloon pump was placed, and patient was hemodynamically stabilized. This is the echo on day two that shows severe diffuse hypokinesis with reduced EF, 25 to 30%, 20 to 25%, sorry. Okay, what's the clinical impression here? So patient is presenting with recurrent presentations, with recurrent vasospastic angina, despite the fact that she was on ISMN and deltiazam, had hyper eosinophilia with high um, absolute eosinophilic count, had severe multifocal coronary and peripheral arterial vasospasm, had left ventricular dysfunction with an EF of 20 to 25%, and had an elevated serum tryptase and urinary histamine. Also had elevated IgE levels for dog allergens. So what's the differential diagnosis here that we were thinking about? One is type 1 Kunis syndrome, which is, which is allergic vasospastic angina. Then is eosinophilic granulomatosis and polyangitis. And third one was isolated eosinophilic coronary arthritis. Is this Kunis syndrome? What do you guys think? So based on our um, definite diagnosis, definitely needs a myocardial biopsy, brain, um, a heart bio, um, biopsy, but considering that the turn of events, patient was managed uh, medically, was shifted on heart failure service, and was optimized in terms of her heart failure. And she improved her LV function. She also improved her uh, hemodynamic <coughs> status. So the question for a definitive diagnosis through a uh, uh, biopsy was deferred uh, as of now. So Kunis syndrome is basically the concurrence of acute coronary syndrome, such as coronary spasm, acute myocardial infarction, and stent thrombosis which conditions associated with mast cell and platelet activation. This is the brief pathophysiology, taking into account all those allergic uh, mast cell and histamine activation. So certain allergens that can actually trigger um, and certain environmental factors that can trigger the Kunis syndrome. Three types, basically. Type 1 is in normal coronary arteries. Type 2 basically happens in, uh, sorry, <coughs> atheromatous coronary vasculature. And type 3 happens Type 3 is basically strength thrombosis. So diagnosis is based on uh, clinical symptoms and signs. Obviously, labs that are supportive include peripheral eosinophilia, elevated urinary histamine, elevated tryptase, positive aeroallergy panel, and elevated cardiac enzymes. And imaging something also based on the angiographic features that can suggest Kunis syndrome. The treatment acute is definitely intracoronary steroids, vasodilators, and calcium channel blockers, and also intracoronary antiplatelet therapies. Maintenance, you do them with IV or PO steroids and also with antihistamines. So back to our patient. Despite improvement in coronary spasm, patient developed worsening hypertension and tachycardia, diffuse ischemia leading to cardiogenic shock, limited initiated on inotropic sport, aggressive medical therapy and supportive management of cardiogenic shock with intravenous cardiosteroids and antihistamines for type 1 Kunis syndrome was done, and improvement in EF to 40 to 45% was documented post these myers. Eventually discharged home on day 21 with amlodipine, isocyrbide mononitrate, nenatidine, and prednisone, and continues to do well as outpatient. Take home points is our refractory vasospasm is rare with a life threatening emergency. Prompt coronary angiography and intracoronary vasodilators can lead to improvement, and allergic etiology should always be considered, and, admi and administration of corticosteroids is beneficial. Thank you so much. <laughs> Any questions? You guys uh, consult allergy and immunology. For, yes, we did. For what about leukotrienes antagonists, montelukast, etc. For standard therapy. I mean, my first thought was 29-year-old presenting in Cook County with basal spasm. I'm going to ask you what the UTOX was. Mm -hmm. uh, but after that, you know, you got to see that something else is going on here, especially with hyperuricemia. Yeah. Regarding the UTOX, it was clearly done on all three presentations, considering definitely our patient population. It was negative. Uh, initial management were more like vasospastic uh, run-of-the-mill angina, but considering afterwards that she was having all those symptoms with peripheral eosinophilia, we started thinking about including rheumatology and allergy about this Kunis syndrome. Um, but as of now, um, in, terms of, in terms of guideline or something, leukotriene inhibitors, 
like there's no per se, <clears throat> I wouldn't say there's no benefit, but as per our literature review, um, <clears throat> they're not, that, that there should be definite benefit documented with them. Like mainstay is acute, acute treatment with IV intracoronary steroids and anti, um, intracoronary vasodilators and maintenance therapy with antihistamines and um, PO steroids. And gradually you taper them down. Very nice case. Everybody heard of Kuna syndrome? All of you? <laughs> now you have. Okay. For any experience, uh, have a vasospasm after drug relief and stent? Uh, about vasospasm after DES? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think in the early literature, first generation, we had uh, hyperosinophilia, we had vasospasm, we had aneurysmal formation. I don't think any of the fellows have ever seen those things nowadays, but these were the late, uh, late effects of the drug relief stents. Um, I mean, vasospasm acutely is probably more from the mechanical irritation, and uh, you also had it at the ostium here as well. So it's a great case for us to keep in mind. I heard one patient after, you know, Texas stand, there's a vasospasm after five, six hours. Mm. Pretty severe one. Yeah, so that's the reason I'm asking. Right? Yeah. She never had any stenting done. No, no, not this mm. patient. I'm just asking this that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask you a question, but she's eating. It's okay. I'm just messing, just messing with her. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes, go ahead. Uh, you also use uh, intracoronary epsixaban. What is the mechanism? Antiplatelet therapies are shown to be beneficial in cases of acute coronary, uh, I mean, non plaque rupture causes of ACS also. Because especially in type 3 coronaries where you have stent thrombosis. One more question? I'm a little skeptical about the uh, Texas stent Who knows? Uh, Makes sense, to, though. You're right. I used to think that also, but I think we also know that we've done these short protocols for anaphylaxis and whatnot, and they seem to work. So if there are pleiotropic effects, it's not clear, um, but I would tend to agree. So. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you so very much. much. Mm -hmm.